Hey guys, I'm Esther from Spicy Vegan Food and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you my top five one pot vegan recipes. First up is our chickpea butter chicken. So for my take on chickpea vegan butter chicken, I add two tablespoons of vegan butter to a pan on medium heat, melt that down, add half a diced large onion finely diced, just want to cook that on medium heat for about three to four minutes. Then you can add in a tablespoon of minced ginger, three cloves of minced garlic, cook those for another one minute. It doesn't take long to cook these. Then you can add in your spice. I add a heaping tablespoon of butter chicken blend spice, six tablespoons of tomato paste. Mix that in just really quickly, just to evenly coat all of that. Then I add one and one half cans of rinsed and drained chickpeas and just really coat those in the spice, give them a really good coating, mix it all together. Then you can add salt if it's not already in your spice blend. One can of full fat coconut milk, mix that all in together, cook it for about 10 minutes. And you can add a little bit of hot chili powder if you like it spicier, 10 ground up cashews if you like it creamier. It just gives it a really nice creamy taste with those cashews. Then you can serve with fresh cilantro and rice or naan. Next up is a creamy one pot pasta with roasted red peppers. Let's get started with our rosé sauce. So the first thing we're gonna need is three quarters cup of soaked cashews. I just soak them in boiling water for about 10 minutes and drain off the water. Then we're gonna add in three tablespoons of tomato paste. And our next ingredient is optional, but for me I love that extra spice, so I added in some chili flakes and I saved some to put into my pot for later on, so I only put about half of them here into my rosé sauce. And then I added in one cup of vegetable broth. So this is it for the rosé sauce. It is so easy to make this portion. And all we have to do is blend it up in a high-powered blender. So just blend that up until it's nice and smooth. Blend, 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 and once this is done, we're just gonna set it aside for a few minutes while we make the rest of our pasta. You can also make this while the pasta is cooking. I like to make it ahead of time so I'm not rushed in the kitchen. And there's my little helper waiting for a crumb to fall. Um, now we're gonna get out our one pot and put a tablespoon of olive oil in the bottom and then one onion that's been finely diced. This onion was so potent, I actually had to put on goggles while I was cooking it because it was just burning my eyes like crazy. So I cooked this for three to four minutes until it was soft and then add in four to five cloves of minced garlic, the rest of my chili flakes, and two to three tablespoons of Italian spice blend. Then I added in a quarter cup of nutritional yeast to give it that really nice cheesy flavor and one cup of chopped roasted red pepper. I think I put a bit more than a cup. This smells so good when you're making this. It smells amazing. Um, next, we're gonna add in three cups of vegetable broth, and this is what we're gonna cook our pasta noodles in. So I have my penne pasta noodles here. You'll want four to five cups of dried penne. I only put four because I want it to be extra saucy. So I mix that all up together, brought it to a boil, then reduced to a simmer on medium low heat. So I chose to use some red lentil penne pasta noodles. Um, these are gluten free. They have 19 grams of protein per serving, so they're super healthy and delicious. You're gonna wanna cook these noodles according to the package instructions. So I think it was about nine minutes or something. At about eight minutes, I added in my rosé sauce when my noodles were just about cooked. So I just mix that all in together. No need to wait. You can add your spinach in right away. About six to eight cups of spinach, just three big handfuls of spinach. And as you know, that's gonna wilt right down to almost nothing. So just you can cover that up and let that spinach wilt or you can mix it in. Once your spinach is all wilted down, your dish is ready. This is so easy to make and it is so, so delicious. I actually tried using this same sauce and method with homemade pasta noodles and it was amazing. Next up is this one pot red lentil curry. This is a fan favorite. Everybody loves this one. Okay, let's get started with all the ingredients. You can pause the screen there if you want, but I'm gonna go through them all as well. So we've got one can of full fat coconut milk. 
you want to double check that label and make sure that it is a vegan coconut milk and make sure that's a full fat because it's going to add a lot of flavor into the dish we've got one and a half cups of red split lentils make sure they're split because they cook the fastest we've got two and a half cups of veg broth four cloves of minced garlic a tablespoon of minced ginger and then we have a bunch of dried spices here so we have a tablespoon of hot chili powder a tablespoon of curry powder one and one half teaspoons of ground cumin and one teaspoon of turmeric powder so those are all our spices that's where we're going to get a lot of our flavor in this dish and one tablespoon sweetener of choice you can put sugar maple syrup whatever it is that you want one large onion i prefer a red onion but i had a white onion in the house i had to use up so i'm using that um, for the veggies we have two medium carrots and we have two cups of spinach. You can add other veggies in here. It's pretty flexible for this recipe. So that's everything. We can get started by cutting our carrots. So I'm gonna cut them into these tiny little half moon pieces like this. I want them small because I want them to cook fast. We are making this whole thing in under 30 minutes, including prep time. So we wanna make sure it's gonna cook fast, evenly, thoroughly, everything like that. Now, before I'm gonna cut my onion, guys, I am going to put on my onion cutting goggles. So I cannot cut an onion without my eyes just watering and burning and I hate it. So I always <laughs> wear goggles. Those are my kitchen goggles. Um, a little tip for you, if you didn't already know, you can use the back of your knife to scrape, you know, your cut veggies, whatever, on your cutting board so that you don't dull your knife. My brother gave me that tip and it's a really good tip for keeping your knife nice and sharp. Um, so now we're going to loosely chop up the spinach. So I'm just kind of doing all my prep here, again, using the back of the knife. And I'm going to rinse my lentils thoroughly. You want to rinse your lentils really well before you use them. So we're going to give them a good little rinse now, a medium saucepan on medium heat, a little bit of olive oil in there, and we're going to add in just our carrots and onion. Don't put the spinach in yet. Um, we want to cook these down now on medium heat for about three minutes until those onions are slightly translucent. Once those are cooked down, we're going to add in our ginger and garlic, cook that down for another minute, um, make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom of the pan. Now make sure you have your vegetable broth ready ahead of time because we're going to add in all our dried spices here, but we don't want them to stick to the bottom of the pan, we don't want them to burn, um, so you have to be really careful with this. You want to mix really thoroughly and have that vegetable broth on hand before you dump the dried spices in. So stir constantly, make sure you're not burning those to the bottom of the pan, it, just for a few seconds, just to kind of get the aromatics going in those carrots and onions there. And as soon as you have them thoroughly mixed around, you want to add your broth right away. Um, so I've got my broth ready here. I'm going to dump that in, add that in. Should probably stop saying dump that in, <laughs> just add it in. Um, I'm going to add in my lentils, my, all my red lentils there. There's some stuck to the bowl, so I'm going to add those in. Once I have everything in here, I'm going to give it a good stir, mix it in really well. I'm going to bring it to a boil, and then I'm going to reduce it to a simmer for 12 minutes. Split red lentils actually cook really fast, so um, just once that's boiling, you just reduce that down to a simmer. And then once that's all done, we can add in our sweetener, so I have maple syrup add in our spinach so since it's chopped again it's not going to take long to wilt it's not going to take long to cook i'm going to mix that all together and i'm going to add in my coconut milk before you add it in save one to two tablespoons of the fatty part of the coconut milk for a garnish if you want um, now i'm going to cook that for three to five minutes i'm going to add in a little salt and pepper to taste make sure you're tasting that to get it exactly how you want I'm gonna garnish it with some cilantro, which is optional. Serve it with some naan bread and with some basmati rice. You can serve it however you want. It's a curry. You can just eat it straight up as like a soup or whatever you want. And then I'm gonna drizzle that little bit of coconut milk as a garnish just because it looks so pretty. And that is all ready to go. Mmm. Wow. That is so good. Next up, we have this one dish sun-dried tomato pasta bake. It only takes five minutes to prep this one and then you just throw it in the oven. So there's all the ingredients. If you need to, you can pause the screen or you can check the link in the description below. Now for this, I'm gonna be using lentil pasta noodles because I like the extra protein. Um, just if you are gonna be using lentil noodles, make sure there's something like this. A chickpea noodle will not work in this dish because it can get mushy when you bake it in the oven for too long. Any penne or rigatoni will work. And then I've got my chopped canned tomatoes. I've got my vegan cheddar shreds. Of course, I have my hot chili flakes. 
I have my Italian spice blend, I have my nutritional yeast, and that's the brand that I use there, Red Mill Bobs, and I've got my minced garlic, I've got my tomato paste, I've got my sun-dried tomatoes that are chopped and they are in oil, so you definitely want to add that oil and that's part of it. Salt and pepper to taste, and kale or spinach. You can use another green if you like, that's chopped. And if you like a little bit of sweetness, I'm gonna put a little bit of maple syrup, but that is optional. Now I've got a nine by 11 baking dish, but another similar size would work. So I'm measuring about 400 grams of this pasta here. So it's about a box and a half of this lentil pasta, but sometimes other rigatoni or penne pasta boxes will just come in 400 grams and those are perfect as well. And then I've got my fire roasted chopped canned tomatoes. I've got my vegan shreds. Um, you can use any kind of vegan cheese that you want in there. It's gonna melt up. I've got my maple syrup, I've got my hot chili flakes, I've got my Italian seasoning. So basically like you can see how easy this is. All you do is just dump everything into this baking dish. Like that is what I'm talking about on a weeknight or a night that I'm super rushed and I wanna have something really tasty and delicious, not just like beans and toast. Um, but I don't have a lot of time to prepare because I have a ton of stuff to do. So that's why I love this so much. Now I'm gonna dump on the hot water. Now you can see in the instructions, you don't wanna to add too much at once. You just want to cover all of the ingredients just just cover them in the boiling water if you have too much it's not going to turn out because you want this to thicken up so be careful that you can still see a couple noodles poking out that is what you want you don't want too much water you can always add more when you check on it halfway through in the oven now we're going to throw it in the oven at 375 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. It can take 35 minutes depending on the noodle you're using. I find these lentil ones work a little quicker. And then I don't know about your dogs, but my dog loves to get the cardboard box when I'm done with it and just rip it to shreds. And now I've pulled this out of the oven and removed the tin foil. You do want to bake this with tin foil on it. Um, I'm just going to mix that together. The noodles are cooked. You want to just check them and make sure that your noodles are cooked nice and al dente. Like I said, it does really depend on the noodles that you're using, um, how long it's going to take for them to cook, but be really careful you don't use chickpea noodles because I know for a fact those do not work in a pasta bake through experience. And then you can just put your favorite topping. So if you have a little vegan parm or if you have a little fresh basil, throw that. Mm. And last but certainly not least is peanut butter Thai coconut curry. So here's all the ingredients. You can pause the screen if you wanna see those, but we're gonna go through them all. So we've got one bunch of green onions, three cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of ginger, two tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari, one tablespoon of maple syrup, or you can use sugar. We've got one 14 ounce can of full fat coconut milk. Double check, make sure that it is a vegan coconut milk. And then we have our 200 grams of sugar snap peas, We've got two bell peppers, two carrots, medium sized. We've got a quarter cup of all natural peanut butter, two to three tablespoons of red Thai curry paste, and one brick of extra firm tofu. Whoops, forgot to put it out. Just put that, <laughs> superimpose that in there. Now you can use tamari if you are gluten free or coconut aminos. So you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 395 and we're gonna cut our tofu into nice little cubes. Now, if you wanna make this recipe even faster, you can just buy smoked, already marinated, pre-marinated tofu. This is just if you don't have that. So that's just one of those time savers. Another thing you can do to save time is buy just a blend of vegetables that are frozen, already chopped, everything like that. You can do that. So we're gonna add our tofu into medium mixing bowl, add in a tablespoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of cornstarch and toss that around again if you're gluten-free just substitute that soy sauce for tamari or coconut aminos so those are nice and coated it doesn't take long and i'm just going to throw those on the baking sheet and put them in the oven for 15 minutes at 395 just make sure you flip those halfway now, if you're not using the frozen veggies, you're using fresh like me, which is always better if you have the time, um, you wanna julienne those carrots and cut the peppers into bite-sized pieces. I recommend red peppers or orange peppers because, or even yellow, um, just not green, because green peppers, honestly, they just taste like they're not ripe. They're not as good, right? <laughs> Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, cut those snap peas up into thirds. Dice up your green onions. You may wanna save a few of the tops of those green onions for your garnish. And then in a medium pan on medium heat or a large pan on medium heat, add in a tablespoon of coconut oil, melt that down. Add in your garlic and ginger, which has been minced or grated. Add in your green onions, stir that around, cook that for about two to three minutes. You'll start to really 
smell the aromatics from those. It's gonna smell amazing. Then you're gonna add in your soy sauce or tamari and your Thai red curry paste. More if you want it spicier, less if you're worried about spice, but Thai red curry paste is not as hot as it looks. Green curry paste is actually spicier. So try to at least put two in if you can. The coconut milk, which we're gonna add in now, will actually cool down that spiciness. So we're gonna wanna reduce that coconut milk now for three to four minutes, which means we're just gonna keep cooking that. And we're gonna stir it around. I wanna make sure that all my curry paste has mixed in really thoroughly. So sometimes I just kind of push it on the back of the spoon, spread it around, make sure that's mixed in so that it's like this. We don't have any chunks left behind. Now the maple syrup, the juice of half a lime, and the peanut butter are going in. Try to get smooth all natural peanut butter because we just don't want that crunchy texture in here because we want it to be super smooth and creamy not that you can't use crunchy but smooth is just better in this case so we're going to kind of bring that to a bit of a boil add in our chopped veggies and reduce that to a simmer now we're going to cook the veggies but we want a little bit of a crispy crunch we want them al dente so you want to simmer that for about four to five minutes you don't want to overcook those veggies um, it could be even less time depending now we're going to fold in our tofu if you've ever watched Shit's creek <laughs> you know what i'm talking about <laughs> fold in that tofu so basically we're just gently mixing it in and just covering it with the sauce and the rest of the ingredients and ooh, look at that that looks so good i can't wait to dive into this so we're going to actually be serving Serving this um, on a bed of rice, if you like, you can serve it however. I served it on basmati rice, which was super delicious. And then I'm gonna put all of my favorite garnishes on top. You can put cilantro, green onion, make sure you serve that with another lime wedge, squeeze that on top, and some salted chopped up peanuts. Really take it up a level. If you want it spicier, you can add on some more sriracha to this. Um, but if you like it how it is, that is ready to go, that is ready to serve, and ready to enjoy. That is so delicious. Thank you so much for watching this video on my top five favorite vegan one pot recipes. If you like these recipes, make sure you check them out on spicyveganfood.ca. If you wanna see more videos like this one, just make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below.